you have in this package three sikhs, and um, along with the sikhs you have the chumash that goes with the sikhs. Um, the staple on the left. The staple on the left. The idea here is that you see, you see a shita, an idea that the Rebbe introduces, that he weaves through a variety of different situations. We have in the Chumash a handful of events that seem to portray Moshe Rabbeinu in less than an absolutely ideal light. I can think of five. Maybe there are more. There are certainly more, but there are five that I'm thinking of. Of the five, on three there are sikhs. And the question is always the same, how could this be? Um, when Moshe Rabbeinu does something and you say, how did Moshe Rabbeinu do this? Let me first enumerate the five. The three that have sikhs, I printed all the three sikhs, because we're going to learn all three of them, I'm sorry. Because there's a, there's a constancy. The Rebbe's answer is the same in all three cases, essentially. The first is an Arpasha. It's the day after Yom Kippur. And Moshe Rabbeinu is acting as a judge. And thousands of people get in line to wait their turn with a judge. And they wait. And Moshe sits and they stand. Comes the next day, people get in line, Moshe sits and they stand. Yisri observes this and says, Moshe Rabbeinu, what are you doing here? Well, it's just for the... You're going to judge a nation of several million Jews, let alone by yourself? You're going to exhaust yourself, you're going to exhaust them, no one's going to survive. Set up a hierarchy. Set up a, 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 a pyramid of judges. You'll be at the pinnacle, you'll be at the helm, you'll be the communicator between Hashem and the Jewish people, but there's no way in the world you can do this yourself. And Rashi uses the expression, go consult Hashem, and if the Abishter will allow you, im, the Abishter will allow you, you'll be able to survive, and if Hashem says, no, you must judge all the Jews personally, it's going to be a disaster, but listen, God's in charge, God says, no, is Nish. This is the first instance. Where Meishan Rabbeinu does something, Moshe Rabbeinu does something that seems... And, and Yisrael suggests him about the Techazan. Why didn't Moshe Rabbeinu think of Yisrael's trick? Yisrael thinks of it. The Ebishter approves of it. It becomes law. And the Chazal say that one of the seven names of Yisrael is Yesed. The reason he's called Yesed is because he, he added a Pasha to the Teda. Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't that smart to figure out... That, I mean, it doesn't make rocket science to understand this idea. It's not such a big Kiddush. That's the first example. The second example is in Pashas Shmini. Another one of you die tragically, abruptly, suddenly. Adam and his children are mourners. And Hashem says to the two of them, to the three of them, you continue doing the service. Let the Jewish people mourn. And the Koinim are instructed to proceed, to do the service, to bring the sacrifices, and even to eat the meat. Adam a Koyin arranges that the Seir Eshchedesh, the, the, the he-goat offering, or the sin offering of the Eshchedesh should be destroyed, shouldn't be eaten. Moshe gets very upset. He says, didn't I tell you you should eat it? You should do it. So Adam said, yes, you told me that when it comes to the special offerings of this day, we should eat it. But the he-goat of the Eshchedesh is not a special offering, it's a conventional offering. I didn't think it was included in the exception, so I destroyed it. Mr. Moshe, im shamata shah, if Hashem told you that the specific carbonus for this day we should eat in spite of the fact that we're oinin him but maybe we should not have eaten the standard carbonus and Moshe says you know what Hashem didn't tell me you know what Hashem didn't tell me Hashem said that the specific carbonus of this time you should eat the Seir is not specific for this day it's on every single Rosh Maybe you're right. Here too, Moshe seems to have made a mistake and I'm setting him straight. Then you have in Pasha's Pinchas when the, 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 the gate of the plague do start to die because of the story with Zimri ben Solu. It says in the Pasha, 
the Jewish people crying, they didn't know what to do. And Pinchas comes running to Meshach Rabbeinu and says, didn't you teach us that in this scenario you don't go to a court of law, you do vigilanteism? And Meshach tells the Pinchas, go ahead and do it. Again, a case where Meshach Rabbeinu forgot, forgot the halacha, and Pinchas reminded him of it. There's no sikha on this, I'm just including it in the repertoire. The next Pasha again, Moshe Rabbeinu gets angry, because they brought back the women in the story of of, uh, of, uh, of Baal Pa'ed, and they were the sinners, Hain Hema. And because they got angry, it actually says, Baal Kal Kas, Baal Kal Tov. Moshe Rabbeinu got angry and he made a mistake. And therefore, the laws of Kashering were taught not by Moshe Rabbeinu, but by Elazar, Moshe Rabbeinu's nephew, who was at that time the high priest. Again, a scenario where it seems Moshe Rabbeinu is being portrayed in a less than ideal light. And finally, the last example, which is probably the most poignant of all, the most pointed of all, is the very last psukim in the Chumash. That the Taylor says, Moshe Rabbeinu passes away, and the sons of Israel mourned him. Says Rashi, only the sons of Israel. Not all of Israel. When Adam died, everybody warned him. It's a cold basis so. Because Adam was loved by everybody because he made peace between well, husband and wife, between brother and sister, between uh, friends and so forth. Moshe Rabbeinu was only loved by the scholars, by the men. There's like five episodes in the Chumash, and there are more, where Moshe Rabbeinu was painted in what looks like a less than ideal light. And we say, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, the great Rebbe of Chal Yisrael, the one who personally received the Torah from Hashem, how could such mistakes have happened? So there are three cases that I know of. Maybe the others also have sikhs, but I'm not familiar with them. So I can't teach you what I don't know. But the Rebbe has gevaldik sikhs, moidindik sikhs. And I chose for this week's topic to do these three sikhs. The reason is because all three sikhs share a common point. All three sikhs have a constant. The message in all three sikhs is identical. And I'll, I'll preempt, I'll, I'll tell you the point before I begin. The underlying point, the inherent point is, Moshe didn't make a mistake. Moshe doesn't make mistakes. Instead, Moshe Rabbeinu sees the world, and sees Klal Yisrael, and sees Yiddishkeit from a perspective. And with the perspective that Moshe Rabbeinu was on, it was correct that he should personally judge the Jews. It was correct that no distinction should be made between Kachi Shah and Kachi Davis, between offerings that were brought for that special occasion and standard offerings. And it actually is correct that Moshe Rabbeinu shouldn't be loved by everybody. Should, should not be loved by everybody. So the Rebbe has an akuda, a principle, which says, when you read about Moshe, and you juxtapose him against Aaron, or juxtapose him against Yisrael, you gain insight into who Moshe Rabbeinu was, what his role was. In other words, from the so-called mistakes of Moshe Rabbeinu, you learn who Moshe Rabbeinu was, what relationship he had with the Eivishter, what relationship he had with Yidin, what relationship he had with the world, what relationship he had with the Tera. And Moshe didn't make any mistakes. Moshe had a point of view. And there's more than one point of view. And in some cases, the Eivishter says to Moshe, listen to Yisrael, listen to Aaron. Not because you're wrong. But because that point of view is appropriate for this situation. Not for Moshe, but for the situation. So this is what we're going to learn. We're going to learn three sikhs. I printed all the pages with all the English, and I'm thrilled that the sparks of Hasidus came out so dark, because all my sikhs are in here. So you, I would destroy my thunder. I have nothing to teach. Yeah? So let's do a little Chumash. Let's do a little Chumash. Right? On page 128. You turn the page, page 128, <coughs> passage 17. This is all. The father of Moshe ben says to him, This is not good. Asherat to Oiz, this that you're doing. Novel people, you'll be exhausted. Gam ata both you, gam ha'oma as well as this people. Asher ibrach, which is with you. Ki chavid me mechad dava, this workload is far too much for you to carry. Lay tuchal asayil of adachi, you can't possibly carry it yourself. Ata, now. Shmava Koyin, listen to me, Yisrael says to Moshe. Yatcha, let me give you a counsel. Exactly, Moshe Rabbeinu needed Yisrael's counsel. May God be with you. 
Hayat Allah arm, you should be for the people, Mulhalakim, in their relationship with God. You should bring the words of the people to God. You should, of course, bring the words of God to the people. You should warn them, the edicts and the teachings. You should inform them of the path on which they should walk, and the deeds they should do. But, you should select, you should see to select, from the whole people, and Shechayel, men of valor, you really came fearful of God, and Shemis, men of truth, and you who hate money. The Samtalain, you should appoint upon them, Sari Alafim, offices of the thousands, Sari Meith, offices of the hundreds, Sari Hamishim, offices of the fifties, the Sari Asaris, offices of the tenth. The Shabtu is the Amukhalai, they should judge the people on a regular basis. The Haya, and it will be, Kaladavar Agad, Liyaviyu, Ilacha, anything large they'll bring to you. But anything small, they should do themselves. They'll lighten your burden, and they will carry the load with you. Right? Now, if you'll do this, and God will agree, you'll be able to survive, and the rest of this people also, will be able to live in their place in peace. Look in the Rashi, on Pasuk of Gimel. You say it's not only goading Moshe, he's goading the Eibishter. God will command, in other words, God will agree with my suggestion, says Mr. Yisrael. will be able to survive. Hamlech, the Gura, consult Hashem. In Yitzhava, Eish Chala, says Kachav, Hashem will agree with me. Tuchal Amayid, you'll survive. The Meyakav and Yadchav will say, no, 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 you've got to judge everybody personally. Says you say, like Tuchal Amayid, you're going to collapse. If they're Eibish dead, wants you to be their own judge. You forget about it. <laughs> you're messed up. You're lost case. Interesting, Rashi. Right? And in other words, you say, say to Moshe Rabbein, this is not going to work. You have to appoint elders. And Moshe does. So he goes to speak to Hashem, and Hashem says to Moshe, I agree. And like I said to you earlier, Yisrael is called Yeser because he was added this parsha to the Chumash. So the Rebbe has a sikh. Turn the page. Page 203 now. Okay? So... Who was saying if he could believe in me? Yisrael saying to, to Moshe. To Moshe, that God should believe in Should accept, saying, should, have con- should approve my suggestion. Part with what I'm saying. Now, so, Rabbi Sai, what we're going to do is, we're not going to read the whole sikh because we don't have sufficient time. Especially since I have three sikhs that I want to learn. But we'll touch on the Nekudah of each sikh. And the Torah couldn't be given. Sorry? He was the Klip of Moshe. The Torah couldn't be given until he appeared. And his coming into the Jewish camp and converting and accepting the Torah was the ultimate conquest. He was a brilliant man. Rashi says there wasn't an Avay. There's not in the world he hadn't worshipped. He was a very sophisticated spiritual person <clears throat> who had looked for truth and had concluded that there was no truth any place and had separated himself from all the pagan worships. He was the he was the priest and he was ostracized. He was excommunicated decades before Moshe Benin was anybody. Before Moshe Benin met his daughter and married her, Yisrael was already ostracized. Yisrael was a man of truth. He was a great, great person. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to read, I want to show you, I, I think this is such a beautiful window into the Rebbe's window into the Teda. So we're going to read, like I said, bits and pieces. Page 203, first of all. Is you do it, it's me and them. Everybody knows the question about this. We come this, how could it be? As Meishah Rabbeinu, Rayim Hem Neshah Yisrael, Meishah Rabbeinu, the trusted shepherd of the Jewish people, Chotalei Nitchai Shish Gevezen, did not entertain the possibility Azayin Eifan and Hagar can defeat him that his way of behaving can bring to novel the game and ha'am the game to exhausting everybody who is im nit eingefallen and didn't enter Moshe Rabbeinu's brilliant mind the Eitzah Hachib Shuta it's common sense it's so many people set up a hierarchy so the man has I shaved him to appoint judges v'azal marois halfen that should support and assist lishpeit as ha'am to judge the people and after Yisrael came in Midian, Yisrael, who was the priest of Midian, was the common of a courtesan's man, came for a short time, recognized it, suggested it, and made it happen. 
Why should couldn't figure this is a great say? It's a great invention. This is discovering quantum mechanics. He gave him a common sense piece of advice. Why did Moshe not think of it? And there's a whole arichas in the sicha that follows. But you turn the page now. Turn the page. Page 205. That's the Kash. Ain't if but make hands again in them, says the Rebbe. One of the explanations of this question is, says the Rebbe, as is nit der pshat, it's not the intent of the trader. As Moshe Rabbeinu has said, Tayyeh given Chas Hashem. The God of the Moshe made a mistake. In our pshats, in, in evaluating the matzav and yidin, the condition of the Jewish people, top of the second column now. When he decided to judge every Jew personally. And by the way, the judgment that Moshe Rabbeinu was doing, don't misunderstand, he wasn't teaching them Shulchan Aruch. He was dealing with their business disputes. When Moshe Rabbeinu was shaved to sell a kid, you know what he was doing? When he was doing, a husband and a wife had a, differ- a difference. Two neighbors had a problem. One guy wanted to face his tent to the, this way. The other guy's door is facing his door. Who should move? Moshe was busy dealing with every pettiness. You know, you have a camp of three million people. He was judging... Financial issues, business discussions. It wasn't about ain't soft or lifting at Simpson and prayer and exalted. You push the judge. And he says, What are you doing? He says, Rabbi Moshe did not underestimate or overestimate the Jewish people. Now the Kavon in them is, listen to this, the Pshatanazay. Bishas Meisha Rabbeinu Kuktaf Yidin. When Meisha Rabbeinu looks at the Jewish people, Bishas Ishtay to Zamen Mit Moshe which is, of course, based on the fact that they're near Moshe Rabbeinu. Zayin Zaytaka Ba'emes. They are, in fact, in a hecher in Maimon the Matzah, on a higher level. How high a level are they by the virtue of their proximity to Moshe Rabbeinu? Ba'oifin, in such a level, as they can in Dan Lenin, or Makabal Vantel, or Kiyad Vura, they can take the Tere directly from the Eib Shana. Now, Moshe hoped, Zayoif, he lifts them up, and brings them near to Zayn Madrege, to his level. And the river, consequently, because Meisha Rabbeinu learned Teira directly from Hashem, Azayi is at Oich Poyal of Yidin, he's able to affect the Jewish people, Azayi is all in canon Len and Piyagvur, that they too should be able to learn directly from the Ebisht. Okay, now, Skip to 207. And this is Yisrael's contribution. And this is Yisrael's contribution. This is how Yisrael comes into the situation. Moshe Rabbeinu actually makes Yidin on a Madrege where they too can learn to the from the Ebishter. The idea that they're normal people and they need to have distances and there's differences, Moshe Rabbeinu dissolves. He says, Yikumamayatse. He comes from his nation, from his land. And he's given a gate, he was a convert and so forth. Erod Gezen Yidin. He construed Yidin. Vizay Shtein, how they're standing. Nitin Amatsev. Not in a condition. Vimoysha Hoytse Yev Tuzayn Darge. How Moshe lifts him up to his level. Lord Vizay Shtein, Vimatsev, Vimitadatsmum. As they are on their own personal merits. And their father to get tainted, he argues to Moshe Rabbeinu as their union for mishpatin yidin, the idea of Jewish people being judged, cannot be in Moshe Rabbeinu, cannot be in Moshe Rabbeinu alone. Let me explain to you what happened here. Earlier in the Sikha, the Rebbe went into a whole issue of what Moshe Rabbeinu being disappointed that the Jewish people don't want to speak directly to Hashem. Tell the Chumash that Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem is talking to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people come running to the Abish and say, Moshe, we're going to die. We can't deal with this. Originally, they had negotiated to speak to Hashem personally. If you're familiar with the Chumash, in tomorrow's Chitas and the day after, Hashem says to Moshe, I'm going to speak to you and the Jews will watch. Sure? Okay. I'm going to speak to you and the Jews will watch. If Hashem is going to speak to Moshe and the Jews are going to watch, all you need is fences. Moshe comes down from the mountain, he says to the Jewish people, God said he's going to speak to me and you'll be witnesses. And the Jews said, no, no, no. We want to talk to us directly. Right? What's the last thing you say? We want personal communication with God. 
So Moshe goes back up the mountain. He says that the Jewish people say, they don't want you to speak to me and they should observe. They want you to talk to them. Oh, if that's the case, I'll picture Elisha. It's not enough the fences. They have to purify themselves. They have to become pure. They have to, they have to be separated and so forth. Hashem comes on the mountain and He gives the Jews what they want. He talks to them directly. He tells one commandment, everybody dies. He resurrects them, tells them a second commandment. They come running to Moshe and say, Moshe, you know what? We, we got our share of direct communication. Go tell God, from now on He should talk to you. You'll... And Moshe gets upset about it. The Torah says, He touched him in the cave and she says, Moshe Benu was so weakened by the Jewish people's lack of interest in communicating with the Jewish because Moshe felt that this was a good thing. That the Jewish people should communicate with the Abish. What was, quote, Moshe Rabbeinu's mistake? Moshe Rabbeinu brought Yidin to a place where they could all communicate directly with the Abish. But Jews were not necessarily on that level. Yisrael comes to Moshe. He says to Moshe, we're not dealing here with Taylor. We're dealing here with judgment. He says, you've got to deal with their world. Not with their world the way you change who they are. But their world as their world is. Let's see it inside. The Indian from Limerat Teda. We talk about learning Teda. Thus, the Yidin come and learn, and the Jewish people come to learn. As a chukim, as a Teda, as a game, as a derech yechabov, as a ma'is of a game. Top of second column, two o seven. It's shayich to zog, and you can argue. As thus goof a pelt, that the, the the very fact that they're coming to learn Teda affects undamot veren Yidin. And in fact, the Jewish people can be lifted up to Dagas Moshe, to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. And learn in his level. And therefore, when it comes to teaching Torah, Moshe has to teach it personally. Even Yisrael says, you'll teach them the rules. When the Jewish people are involved in a judgment, in a business dispute. When it comes to their affairs, this to oisk like and divided to resolve their arguments, their petty differences. Yeah. yeah. At that point, they're not in the world of Meshur Rabbeinu. It's therefore not realistic that at that time, they cannot be lifted. To makabel's eye to receive, unlearning and to learn the mishpat teda, the judgment, the practical application of teda by Fanish al Moshe on the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. In other words, like this: Jesus is to Moshe. Moshe, there's your point of view and my point of view, and we're both right. Your point of view is that you can lift the Jewish people up to your level. It's undeniable. My point of view is the Jewish people are not on your level except when they're in your presence. That's also undeniable. So he says, let's, 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 let's split it. When it comes to matters of Torah, teach them. You teach everybody. It's not realistic for one person to teach millions of people. You lift them up to your level. But when you're dealing with their pettiness, your, their pettiness is not in your world. In your world there's no pettiness. Their pettiness is in their world. Now, when they come to you with their pettiness, they're also uplifted. He says, it doesn't matter. Nevertheless, you should descend to the level of the pettiness and resolve it there. Even though they're, quote, artificially, if you will, artificially being lifted to a higher place. Here. The matzav is of, uh, the condition was, in fact, as when the baledinim shtei in far Moshe Rabbeinu, when the judged are standing before Moshe, hadaz guf, this itself, they uf geheben, it lifted them from the immersion in their business. I'm skipping the bracket. Paragraph biz to Kenan, from Im, Nemen, and Lenin, the Mishpat Ataida. Moshe lifts the people up. They could receive it directly from him. When I'm open from Moshe's Daga, Moshe have been his level. From Destin. Nevertheless, how the Rebbe the mask of the Tatasis, Hashem said, He says, right. We need to anticipate and guard. Oich, turn the page. The matzim, also the level. The funyidn of the Jewish people. Vizevel and Zayn, as they're going to be. Noch them, afterwards. Vizevel and Zayn, they're going to go into the Holy Land. 
Then Hincha Sheikha that came in Mishnah is going to pass away. The Kama Om Azeva Gaiman, the Jewish people are going to be able to do perhaps not such wonderful things. As Chatzev El Nitlen and Tatum Ipi Mishnah, even though they're not going to be able to learn Tatum from Mishnah Rabbein, and they're hoidin veren durch him and be uplifted through him. So Tera, was the extending the Varavai, the Tera, which is always the word of Hashem, Oich Demol, to Onkumus Azei, should reach them as well, Durch the Roshe, Alpha Yisrael, to the leaders of the Jewish people, from them there, that respective generation. This is what Yisrael is saying. In other words, who's right and who's wrong, everybody's right and everybody's wrong. Yisrael comes in the morning. He says, Moshe, what are you doing? What are you doing? So the Moshe says, look what happens to them when they come before me. Look what happens when they come before me. He says, I understand what happens when they come before you. But that's not the real world. It's not the world. If you want to bring Tater into the world, you've got to make the Tater work in the world. The Tater cannot work in the world if it revolves around you. The Tater can only work in the world if it can revolve around the world. And the way you do that is bring the Tater to the world. In other words, what's the previous of the Rebbe's message? Or the previous of the Rebbe's interpretation? Moshe has a perspective of, of reality. He has a perspective of Yidin. His perspective is very lofty, very elevated. And he uplifts. Yisri doesn't say Moshe is wrong. Yisri is saying that Abishta did not give a Torah to remain on a Moshe level. The Abishta gave a Torah emphatically to descend from the Moshe level. You're not going to live forever. You're not taking them into Yisrael. It's not a negative. It's not a oh, woe is us. It's what the Abish they wanted. The purpose of Tata is to change the world. Not to take Eden out of the world. Says so Yisrael to Moshe Rabbeinu, temporarily you're in a position to take Eden out of the world. It's working. But that's not the intent. That's not what the Abish gave the Tata. Teach them the Tata, lift them up to your level. But there must also be the idea where the Tata is brought to their level. So that when the world becomes real, the Torah will be useful then also. So who's right? Nobody, who's wrong? Nobody's wrong. Mesha sees things one way, and Yisra sees things a different way. Right? And to, to elaborate further, in other words, to explain this even better, if you, this is Moshe Rabbeinu's limitation. I mean, to say about Moshe Rabbeinu's limitation is hard. But Moshe Rabbeinu's limitation, this whole situation is, Moshe Rabbeinu is a completely spiritual man. A completely godly person. No person was like Moshe Rabbeinu. According to Torah, the way he's explained in Kabbalah, and especially in Hasidus, every generation of the Rebbe has a shepherd. There was one generation that had two. As you're going to see in the subsequent year. And that was the generation of Moshe. Moshe couldn't lead the Jews without Adam. Because Moshe was in the heaven, he wasn't on earth. The shepherds that came after Moshe Rabbeinu were here. Moshe was near. The connection between Moshe and the Jewish people needed another inter- intermediate, another person to bring who Moshe was down into the world. In this instance, it was Yisrael. In other words, Moshe has a point of view. Yisrael is saying, your point of view is true in the heavens. But if the Torah was given on the earth, and the Torah was given on the earth, if the Torah was given to take into the Holy Land and into the real world, says Yisrael to Moshe Rabbeinu, let me teach you something, Moshe. Not that I'm smarter than you. To the contrary. I, I live in the real world. You don't. It's not, it's, not a, it's, it's not an insult. It's the greatest compliment. In the real world, this is not going to work. In the world of Moshe Rabbeinu, it could work. In the real world, it's not going to work. And the Abisha says, Yisrael is right. Okay? So you see, the, you see how the Rebbe is thinking, how the Rebbe is approaching it, yeah? And the rest of the Sikh is homework. Now, Rabbi Sai, we go to the second example. Okay, so if you don't mind turning the page again, we're going to read quickly, page, this is page 72. Turn the page once more. You with me? Page 211. The Esir and the he goat that was meant to be a sin offering, Doresh Doresh Moshe researched. Vehine Seraph and it was destroyed. Moshe Rabbeinu watched Nadav and Aviyu's lives snuffed out. Page 72. Yes? 
Moshe Rabbeinu watches not in his life becomes snuffed out and the most important thing in history of the Jewish people. And God says to Moshe, tell your brother and his sons, continue doing what you're doing with the Jewish people more. They should behave like as if nothing happened. So they behave, but nothing happened. They continue doing the service, they don't tear their clothes, they don't cry, they don't let their hair go long, and so forth. And they eat the offerings. The halacha is, the onion is not allowed to eat kachim, except the king God, what's the din? And as she says it, Arna Kayin ate it. The children couldn't eat because they're not saying it. Onion, Kayin God, and Moshe finds out, he didn't say that, they burnt the he-goat of the, um, the Rosh Chodesh offering. But Yik said, Moshe Rabbeinu gets angry, and the two remaining sons of Aaron, Allah and Yisam, are labored. And he asks them, why didn't you eat it? Why didn't you eat it? And he goes on to, uh, as Rashi explains it, maybe it became possible, because it went in too close, maybe it became possible because it went out too far, maybe it became possible because it went out, no, 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 kosher, 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 kosher. So why didn't you eat it? What did Allah and Yisrael do? He didn't say a word. Because Moshe's anger was really not directed at them. It was directed at his brother. But he wouldn't speak that way to Aaron Akayin, so he redirected anger towards them. Wow. And then Ashi says, well, I told you to behave like as if no one died. Why'd you burn the ego? So the brother said nothing. The last line on the page, Aaron responds and he says to his brother, If today they had offered up their sin offering and their all consumed offering, lift me out the shame before God. But the an event like has happened occurred. In other words, if a person came to the base of six years from today on a Wednesday and was offering up a conventional offering and one of their immediate relatives died, and I would eat that sin offering. Would Hashem be happy about it? In other words, you told me today is a special day. And because it's a special day, we should behave like we're not mourners. I did. This he goat is not about the special day. It's an ordinary offering. Why is it included? So I made the deduction that the offerings associated with the special day, we ate. I ate them. I did it myself. But this is an offering, which next month we're going to bring again. It's a conventional offering. Now she says the words, If God told you that when it comes to the specific offerings of the day, that we should bring them, notwithstanding the condition, He didn't say it about everything else. Here comes one of the most beautiful psukim in the Chumash. Vayishma Moshe, Moshe heard Vayita Ve'enav, and it was, it was correct in his eyes. It says that Ashi, and I made an arrow. Hoyida V'loy Boish, Moshe admitted he wasn't embarrassed to admit, learn Malay Shamaiti. Hashem didn't tell me explicitly. What a story. What's going on? Hashem tells Moshe something. Moshe assumes it means something. Gets angry. Aaron says to him, Excuse me, it doesn't mean this, it means something else. Moshe says, You're right. But Moshe, Moshe wasn't enough of a time with Chacham. Who is wise? Huh? Who learns from everybody. But Moshe Rabbeinu was not just anybody. Moshe Rabbeinu was Moshe Rabbeinu. And here too there's a sikh. I remember the Rebbe saying the sikh. It was delicious when it was said. It was during the year of Shiva, the Avelas, when the Rebbe, the Rebbe was in the house. And the Rebbe spoke the sikh. The essence of the sikh is the same as when we just completed. Nobody's wrong. Everybody's right. It, pers- it depends on the perspective. But the beauty of it is, nobody's wrong, everybody's right. But in practice, you can only do it one way. Aaron wins. In the previous Sikha, Moshe and Yisrael, nobody's right. I'm saying nobody's wrong. Everybody's right. In practice, you can only do it one way. And Yisrael is right. Why? The Abish says to Moshe, I did give the Tater for the world. And you're not in it. So when you get into these situations where you have a heavenly perspective, you need someone to teach it to you. Before it was Yisrael and Zara. Let's read the beginning of the Sikha. We're going to jump around, of course. This is a very long Sikha. It's a very long Sikha. We're not going to do it all, obviously. Ainif and the Inyanim. No, wait. Then I, okay. I, I'm sorry. I, made, I put the eye in the wrong place. I, I have to I stand corrected. Forgive me. Page 370. Just flip over the package. In the Pasheva Detail, the Tater relates. Allah <laughs> died. 
who were Moshe's nephews, of course. Alafa people says, I'm an oinanim. They're mourners on the day of the death of a relative. This is not the to, but there's two halachas. One is called oinain, and the other is called avail. Oinain means a mourner on the day of the death, on the day of the deceased, of the, the death of their relative, or the day of the burial. Avel. Okay. Avel, that's a whole story with the Rebbe and, and, and the Rishon B'Salavechik. Avel is a week of mourning. Avelus is midrabonim. The seven days of mourning is rabbinic or halachal meshim sinah. Aninus is midrabonim. It's a biblical requirement, a biblical condition of aninus. And whatever, on the day the person dies, or until the burial, be that as it may, there's a din of oinet. And the Chazal say, the lashta ain't aninus ala belev. Aninus is an emotional condition. There's an assumption made, somebody died, you haven't buried them yet, you're distraught. An oinin doesn't make bracha on a glass of water. He's not allowed to put on film. He's not allowed to do a mitzvah. Because the assumption is you're, just, you're not functional as a Jew. You're not. You can't, can't eat, can't drink. The Yikor Barav says, if you want to eat, eat. Don't make brachas. It's very weird. It's aninus. So there's very severe halachas of oinin. Aaron is an oinin. An oinin is not allowed to serve in the base of Mikdash. Even if he's the only koyin. Yeah? Aaron and his children were oinin. Unan oinin is also bakachim. An oinin is prohibited especially from eating korbanos. The Allah is, by the way, just incidentally, a Kohen God will mock the Oynan. A Kohen God will allow to bring Karbanas as an Oynan, but he's not allowed to eat them. In this case, not only did they offer the Karbanas, Ada did the service, because he's a Kohen God, and why do an, an extra violation if you don't must? But they ate it, and eating it was also even for Adam and Kohen. But Hashem said, Hashem says, Zosayin v'achal can begame it, that they should eat it. No bracha. No, 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 no. They, they, of course, were a bracha. They were not mourners. They said, Asher Kedishonu, B'Gdishvasa Shaladin. People, it's cute bracha, you know that. When a Kayin eats, Asher Kedishonu, B'Gdishvasa Shaladin, then they make it by Bechaz Kedim. V'tzivonu lechel chatas. V'tzivonu lechel. The bracha, the same bracha by Duchan. We were sanctified with the sanctity of the priesthood, and we're eating. Kikein Tzuvei Sisara is commanded, Ba'aninu Tzichlo. They should even eat it as oinin. They didn't eat the he goat of the sin offering of Rosh Chedesh. Not if I burnt it, burnt it. It's very excited. Moshe, Moshe, get angry. Skip to the next paragraph. Hot Aaron gave it. Moshe, Moshe, the Aaron answers him. Hey, Nayim, the Kriyvu is chatosam. He goes into the whole thing, and the conclusion is the last line of the first column on page three seventy. Im shamata b'kotche deisha. You were instructed about. Offering specific for this time, ain't lecha lahaka b'kachei deir. It doesn't give you a right to be negligent, lenient about uh, the kadoshim for that are regular. When the pasuk is mesayim, top of the second column, the pasuk concludes as gleich immediately. Vayishma Moshe Moshe Rabbeinu heard vayita beina that it was correct in his eyes. Hoyde v'lei boish he admitted and did not was not embarrassed. Lei malaysia mighty to say I didn't hear. Okay, and then he brings the Targum, Yerusalem ben Azil, Va'apik Kuzim ben Mashisa Lameimer, a voice was sent out from the Mishkan to the whole Jewish camp, and no, I, who the Is'al Mis Hilches I, Moshe says, I forgot the Alocha, Va'aranachi Itke Yosili, my brother Adam reminded me. Moshe told everybody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here, in the Msipas and Ephraim Kama Dvarim Tmuim, this story has a bunch of strange things. The questions, we know enough of the questions. But what's going on here? Moshe forgets, gets angry, I don't answer him, which is, I, I understand. Let's go straight to the answer. Turn the page. 374. I think I made an error, I hope I made the error in the right place, this time at least. And the Rebbe makes the same point. And in the Kudar Abay Sayyid, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's a matter of perspective. And again, you see how the Ebishter agrees with Tere Loi Bashamai. Moshe's perspective is heavenly. Hashem says, no, no, Moshe, you're right. But Adam's also right. Do what he says. Because Adam is understanding the Tere on the level of Oretz, the level of the earth. The Runta Shaitz of Ishim Moshe met Adam in this. The distinction between Moshe and Aaron is, as Moshe is in Rani Be'ikya Teira, Moshe's idea is Teira. Right? Teira Sibu Lanu Moshe, 
zichur kedush meisha avdi. Mash einkin ara na koyin gadol, as opposed to ara the high priest, is in yonay peikir avoda. His deal is to serve Hashem. The avoda sakabon is v'chuli in mishkan. The sacrifices in the tabernacle in the mishkan. Vas einet from the chilukim. So the shenzei is one of the distinctions between Moshe's perspective, which is Taira, and Aaron's perspective, which is service, is as follows. As mitzad didar yefun Taira, when you look at the world through a prism of Taira, shtein ali in yonim and velt, everything in this world exists, vizay zaynin in alpi Taira. The whole world is Taira. The whole world is Taira. Yeah? Imagine two guys come to Arof, two guys come to Arof, and they have a very, very involved argument about millions of dollars. And they want to kill each other. They're furious with one another. They're absolutely livid. Because this one's accusing the other of stealing, the other one is saying, what are you talking about? And you come into it, like Rabbi Hirschsprung, a master of Torah, but he's got a head in the books. And they walk in, and they're all serious, and they, you know, they went in there. And they present the case, and a person, you remember the person, you know, this is this Gemara. Rabbi, relax. <laughs> who owes who money? When you look at things in Taita, everything is Taita. The human emotions are Taita. Everything's Taita. That's Moshe's perspective. Everything's Taita. Let's continue. Mashain came with the Dagger from Avoid as opposed to the level of serving Hashem. One must lower himself to the level of the world. As she stands on her level in her condition and her circumstance. To do the service in the world. Takas Teda teaches but as Teda teaches and is applied to the world. Okay? Now, Go to the page 375. Zion. It's not too many pages. Zion. Al is This explains to us. As Beid Bisvaris, both positions, to both points of view about what to do with this Higot of the Rashkhaitish offering. Sai Swaras Mesha, both Mesha Rabbeinu's perspective, Al Madaf S and Oyh de Kochi Dalis, that even the regular sacrifices should be eaten. Moshe saw no distinction between the unique offerings of that day and all offerings. As, as well as the theory of Aaron, as is Ayn and Andesh, it is a distinction, that in Emes, they're both true. Not only true on the, on the debate level, skip the parenthesis, it's true in fact, in law. Toloi in the Dagev and Velchemedet. It just depends on your level. When you see the Torah from Moshe's perspective, this is how I this is how I heard this sicha from the Rebbe. This is how I heard the sicha from the Rebbe. Somebody dies. Somebody dies, and you're mourning. Why are you mourning? Because God said so. You had a baby, and you're happy. Why are you happy? God said so. Somebody dies, and God says, "Don't mourn." Okay, I won't mourn. God says, eat the meat. Eat the meat. To Moshe Rabbeinu, the human emotion was part of the Torah as well. In other words, it wasn't human emotion. Moshe Rabbeinu looks at Aninus as the idea of a person losing a relative and they just died that day and being heartbroken as a halach in Torah, just like eating food is halach in Torah. The same God who said, mourn, says, don't mourn. That's all. You don't mourn? No mourning? Eat. Aaron is a person. Somebody died. God has to tell him to be broken. Tell you that, tell him be sad. Tell you that, to tell him you're allowed to be sad. And you must be sad. And you're not allowed to suppress that sadness. But Aaron needs to be told by Hashem, be sad. Nobody has to tell him how devastating it is to lose two children. Especially such children. So abruptly. It's such a surprise. So Aaron says to me, I don't understand you. What, what, you think because Hashem said to me, I the carbonus, my children didn't die, my heart's not broken? From Moshe's perspective, the broken heartedness was a part of Tater, like eating the carbonus. So Hashem says, don't break your heart, it's nisht. Break your heart, it's yah. 
says, Adam, let me teach you what the Abishta means in his Tehra. When Hashem says in his Tehra that when somebody loses relatives, they should mourn, that's not only a commandment, it's a human condition. Because Tehra is real, it's in the world. And because mourning is a human condition, when Hashem says don't mourn, that's a huge exception. It's not changing of a law, it's not do something else, it's an exception. And when you make exceptions, you don't make the exception bigger than it must be. So Moshe says, ah, now I understand. Moshe wasn't wrong. Moshe has a heavenly perspective. <laughs> he told me years ago, someone that I know told me that when he lived in Yeshiva, that Chabrusa, his Chabrusa knew Aramaic fluently. And he could read a page of Gemara, translate it precisely, put the punctuation in the right place, always know where to put the page in the commas, and when he could finish reading the page, he had no idea what he read. So he told me, this guy says to me, he would tell me what it said, I told him what it meant. It's exactly what's going on here. Moshe tells Adam what Hashem said, and Adam is telling Moshe what the Eidushtah meant. Moshe didn't make a mistake, but Moshe's trade is heavenly. And the Abish the Tater is earthly. Aaron is teaching this to Moshe. He says, Moshe, I understand. I understand. I understand why I misunderstood. And I understand why you're correct. Yavad is finished. Let's read a little, a little bit inside. From Moshe's perspective, the Tater cooked the world. As Tater looks at the world, the whole world is another idea in the Tater. He saw no distinction in truth. Skip the parenthesis. Between temporary carbonus and regular carbonus. Because the idea of something being time restrained or not, nothing to do with the Tate as it is eternal. Okay? Go to the second column. The last full paragraph. The Ribat Moshe. Therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu. Zayin de Karaya Nem and being a trusted shepherd. Same point. Gezen un opishatst Yidin. He saw and evaluated Jews. Vizeshtein by Im. How he saw them. The Pharaoh by Im. Oiski Kumid. It made sense to him. Skip the parenthesis. As Oich by Yidin. By Jewish people as well. Skip the parenthesis. Is there's no distinction sufficient between temporary offerings, unique offerings, exceptions to the rule. In other words, there's a very big difference between saying there's a different rule and saying it's an exception to the rule. This is a rule and this is a rule. He says, my, I don't know, the rule is still the same. There's an exception being made. My son still died. Next paragraph. Adin. He experienced and he evaluated the situation how it is from the perspective of the world. Turn the page. Since in the world there's a phenomenon of time in in this world is da piha emes is according to truth. Skip the parenthesis achilik to vishin kachish shangot yadayis. Second column, Ches. Tater brings both points of view. So what are you going to do? Moshe has one point of view, Adam has another point of view. What am I going to do? So who's going to do? Who's going to ask the question, what am I going to do? What's the halacha for next generation? For two generations from now? For three generations? You know how many halachas I learned from these people? You can't imagine. This, this took him a quote all over the Gemara. Moshe Rabbeinu hears, and it seems correct in his eyes. V'chdei v'sin, in order to know. Asiz da achilak, there is a difference. In such a situation of aninus. Silishin kach yishah and kach yadayis, unique karbonis and standard karbonis. Hatas Moshe gedat herin fun arinin. Moshe had to hear it from a person who lived on the ground, not in the heavens. Aaron taught it to him. Rabbi Moshe mitzad atzmei, Moshe on his own, mitzad argosik, his level, is their matzah fakir, the condition was otherwise. 
So Moshe tells Aaron Hashem's words, and Aaron tells Moshe Hashem's intentions, and Moshe says, I agree. I agree. It makes sense. Aaron teaches it to him. He says, you're right. I'm wrong. You're right. Moshe said in addition to the fact, but said ungenommen da sadin he agreed with his position. Unati masking the web and again the pale and he agreed with him this was the correct plan of action. Skip the parenthesis. Is a given the fun safid he was happy about it and he announced he should know Adam is right. If you add the human element to it, it's moidendik. Adam is explaining to my shabbat what tavelis. What it means to mourn. It means to lose a relative. Because of Moshe's perspective, everything's tied. Now, final example. The end of the Chumash. Hey, what was the number of time? Huh? What was the time? There was another. Yeah. A few weeks before, there was another Sikh. It was a the Sikh. But that made an effect an opposite than Kudu. The Zayt Chuk Satayda Sikh. You have to understand how I heard those Sikh. I heard those Sikh. The Jewish people mourned for Moshe Rabbeinu and Avis Mai for 30 days. But yet, when they ended, he made the days, the mourning, the crying, evil, the mourning of Moshe for Moshe Rabbeinu. Rashi, I made an arrow. B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel, has charem, the males, not the females. And I want to insert, it doesn't mean males, it means the scholarly males. The ordinary males also didn't cry too much. Avil Aharin, as opposed to Aharin. Because he pursued peace. But he said, Shalom and Ishla Leyu and brought peace between one man and his fellow. Or when Ishla about to the woman and her husband, and then are killed, based on the whole Jewish people mourned. Shalom and the Kavis. Men and women. The question is striking. Okay, you see where I made the arrow? No, 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 no. The Sikha. Yeah, it's Tavua. It's, it's strange. See his movement, it's understood. As God was said, when you talk about the passing away of Moshe Rabbeinu, is Masim, it's appropriate to their Salim to relate Zayna Milas. Good things about Moshe Rabbeinu. The series of Sukkim that we read here describes good things about Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Lekos, Eine, he didn't age. When they come over, there was no prophet like him. The Chalo Isis, all the signs and so forth in the page. Yeah? Yeah. Ta, page two fifty four. Ta. We pass Dod the Hadgosha. What place is it for this emphasis? As by Moshe is not given the shleimus amayla, that Moshe was lacking in this advantage for Navas Shalom of bringing peace to one man and a cell of Yibaren. If it passes Chukas the Tater writes it, which Rashi does, it's a compliment to Aaron that people loved him. But why is it a compliment to Moshe that people didn't love him? Right. You see what I made the arrow? Dalit. The Azbar, but the answer is. Then in the Mephan Avos, Shalom for Naren, when it comes to the way Adam used to make peace with your man and his fellow, the Seyel Chazal, the Gemara says, the Medish says, As Kedei Las is Shalom and Yishla Yeh, in order to bring peace with your man and his fellow, what time is Shana given the man? It's Moshe is to bend the truth. Adam, you bend the truth. But this is Kamuv and Adam and Mutter v'rasi apitei. It's a good thing. Kamar mechazal, as the Gemara says, mutter l'shanes, mutter l'lo adam l'shanes. But when it comes to making peace, you can make certain modifications. Adam would come to a woman and say, "I met your husband. His heart is broken. He loves you so much." He'd go to the husband, say something about the wife. They were cursing each other up and down. He told how we, Hollywood producers how to do it. The Hollywood they producers. They say, "This guy's in. If you're in, he's in. If you're in." Yeah. But may shara beinu abel, but may shara beinu abel. The Bible me does his measure to emes. His measure is truth. The Bible has been that you can zayin. But it always worked for him with all all the moments. Adam was a practitioner, was an expert. Adam, uh, Politician. Adam was a tzaddik gober. Av Rabbi, he's hired at Avram Avinu. He was a guy by Yitzchak Tzorchis. When Adam told you your wife loved you, you believed him. The Bible has been that you can zayin that if you have a shalom, but you couldn't do it. Moshe is emes. You have to say the truth. It's taka true. When I fall pia that even for mutter chul l'shanes with our shalom chul is canal, I rough when teira was teira semes. The teira of truth says you ought to make these modifications. Skip the bracket. Is over as far even and hogra. Still, 
even if you're lying according to Taira. After all, there's a concealment here. If me this emes on the measure of truth, on the far of the smith masim to the shlichus, therefore it's not consistent with the mission was from them of that individual was midosay who made the and the chad didn't the of that person whose measure and status is one of emes. That if an anog of this way of conduct is shaykh to ad, shaykh to ad was midosay is midosay chazek. It actually be this kindness, right? As opposed to meishar abein. Page two fifty six now. Since both ways of conduct are based on Teda, is moved when it's obvious as Yesh Bazer, Mashain Bazer, each has a strength over the other, and the other has a strength over the first. The Malafan and Hagas Mesha is, the advantage of Mesha Abed's conduct is, there is not the slightest bending away from truth. The Idak conversely, is Da Mailer and Hagas Aaron, is a distinct advantage in the way Aaron behaved. It was Dabke Durechir, only through Aaron's conduct, that Grech Mebis from Takhn the Yesi reached the lowest levels to make peace. But you have to make modifications. Next paragraph. Und mit went Eich Musber. This explains that Tam was Dabke by Ptiras Moshe. Moshe passed away. Is Mukit Malosh Shlan. He's speaking about Aaron's mile. But Moshe Mechayev Shal Moshe, as long as Moshe Reina was alive. And that is given for Numa Meduch Fidin Zayn Shlichus Bama. Then he was doing his purpose in this world. Is he given Kol Kuli Asuk in Zayn Efen Avadi? He was so busy doing what he was doing. Un Zayn Shlichus Ba'Elam and his purpose in this world is Ton Alas to do absolutely everything. Baby, for me, this is absolute truth. He didn't notice. Second column at the top. B'Shas Aber. When, however, as the Kumen and his man from the Yal Meish or Hanavei Meish rose up. He finished his mission. He was rising up. He was able to even notice only at that point the mild and hugged Adam was advantageous about Adam's way of service as well. Was going to show him to get and eat and drink peace. At the moment he stopped doing his service, he motion. He stopped his life, and he observed it. Now, so long as he was living, he only saw truth. He had no time to stop and notice somebody else has a way of doing things. Now that he's passing away, he sees that there's an advantage to a different approach as well. Not at the expense of his Why do you call it an advantage, though? A, a particular advantage, not an overall advantage, meaning they, they share the mutual responsibility for the completion of it. Uh, correct. But when people share mutual contribution to the solution of it, each one has to be completely immersed in his part. Right? Page 257. Yeah? You see what I'm reading? First column, three paragraphs in the bottom. It's also written in the Tate of Truth. In the Psukh of Vegemis, it talks about the death of Mesha. It brings up the avoid of Adnagavavid's Mesha, because it's only now that Mesha Rabbein notices it. But it's not a criticism of Mesha Rabbein. It's a distinction. Mesha Rabbein has his approach, and Adnagavavid is his approach. Shay, you look. Know.